Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, I wanna show you how to get some project files up from your computer onto a remote repository on github.com. So this is meant just to be a quick start guide on how to get some files from your machine to a remote repository. This won't be a full tutorial on GitHub or Git. Uh, I will link up a video by Brad Traversi that really goes in depth on this topic, but I just wanna create the quick start guide. So the biggest reason for this tutorial is the fact that I've seen people using the drag and drop method where they'll create a remote repository and then they'll just drag the files in like that. Now, besides the fact that that's not really a good way to work with Git, the biggest issue that I saw in this is the fact that not all the files will transfer over in this process. And I've seen that issue occur quite a bit. So unfortunately I did this in a tutorial myself. So I wanna just go ahead and correct that and have a video focused on this topic. So we are gonna focus on an article that I just wrote up. So this will be linked up in the video description. So if you wanna follow along with this, go ahead and check that out. So what we're gonna do is first create the remote repository on github.com. Then we will download the Git installer, we'll download Git, create the remote repository or the local repository, and then we'll just take those files and push them up to this remote repository. So go ahead and check this article out. I'll move it out of the way here. And we will start by going to github.com. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one. It's free, get that set up. And then once you have it, go ahead and go to your repositories and just go ahead and create a new repo here. So go to new here. I'm just gonna create one called my project. So whatever you wanna name it, I'm not gonna add a description. You can leave yours public unless you actually want it private. I'm gonna set mine to private. We won't add a readme file. We'll just go ahead and create that remote repository. So I'm gonna leave this open here. We're not gonna follow these steps just yet. We have to do a few things here. So I'm gonna leave this open. Uh, in order to start getting our local projects onto github.com, we need to download Git. So go ahead and just do a search for Git here. Uh, just let Google find it for you. Click on that. This link right here will be in the description also. And I'm gonna use Windows for this. So whatever you have, go ahead and download the installer for your machine. So we'll give this a few seconds here and we'll just run through this process. Okay, so the installer set up here. We'll just go ahead and leave the defaults here. So we'll just hit yes and I'm just gonna let the default settings be set up. I just uninstalled it for this tutorial, so I might have to override some things. Uh, unless you have some custom settings, just go ahead and let it kind of guide you through this process. Okay, so that's successfully installed. Let's go ahead and uncheck that. We'll hit finish here. We'll close out this link right here. And I'm gonna open up the article because now that we have Git installed, we have access to all of these commands and I just wanna run through these individually and then we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, we have the first command, which is git init. This initializes a local repository, just like the one we created on github.com. So what we created here, it creates a local version of that. Git status, this just lets us know what's in our staging area, all the files that we're ready to start merging into that local repository git add goes and actually preps those files and then git commit commits them into that local repository now once those pri once those files are committed to that repository we set a remote so we let it know what remote github account to link to and i'll show you how to do that and then we just push those files onto that remote repository so there's git pull and git clone we won't go into detail with those i'll show you an example uh, but that's not really the scope of this video. So I'll go ahead and move that link again. Let's minimize this and let's go ahead and first let's search up for git bash. So we downloaded git and this is git bash and I know a lot of people like to work directly from this. I actually like to work from the Windows command prompt. So let's just start here. Let's just do git dash dash version. And this will tell you the version of GitHub you have. So if you successfully downloaded everything, you should see this. I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna open up my Windows command prompt. So if you already had it open, you might wanna close it and reopen it to let it update. But I'm just gonna do git, let me zoom in here and we'll just do git dash dash version. Okay, so that means everything's connected successfully. And what I wanna do is go ahead and initialize a local repository in the folder that I have on my desktop. So I have it set up right here, it's called my project. So I will CD into that. So CD into desktop, and then I'm gonna CD into 
my project. So it doesn't matter what language you're working on. This is actually a Django project that I just initialized. So now that we are in that project folder, I'm going to run git init. So this will actually create a folder in that folder that we have. So in that project folder. So if we open this up, it might seem confusing because you can't actually see it. So let me zoom out here. We can't see it because by default that git folder is a hidden file. Now, if you want to see that, we can go ahead and go to hidden items, check that. And that's what we just created. So let's just run through that one more time. I'm going to delete that. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And because I deleted it, I can initialize it again. So if we go ahead and do that, there we go. They, there are our local GitHub files. So once we initialize it, let's go ahead and actually start setting things up. So we want to go ahead and run git status. I want to see what's going on here. And this tells me that I have two files and folders prepped for my staging area. Now to actually add them, what I could do is just do git add and then set the file name or folder name. So I can just do like manage.py. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's see. So I can spe uh, specify a specific file or folder, but what I want to do is add all of these. So I want to make sure everything in here is added. So I can do git add and then dot. So I can actually check the status again. So I can do git status and there we go. So it tells me that these files are now in that staging area and they are ready to be committed. Now, if I happen to make a change, so let's actually open up that folder and let's go ahead and go into the settings.py file and let's make a comment. So I'm going to make a comment here. So this doesn't matter. Again, don't focus on the language. If you're not familiar with Django, I just made a change. And if I do get status, we should see that a file was modified. So when this file is modified, we need to go ahead and re add that. So I can just do get add and then we'll just run get status again. And now we are all up to date. So these files are ready to be added. They are in our staging area. We added them. And what we want to do to actually add them into this git folder is we want to go ahead and run git commit and we want to commit them to that folder. So we'll just do git commit dash M and I'm not going to not going into details of what's actually happening here. So that tutorial by Brad Traversi will explain a little bit more, but we are going to commit the files. We can write whatever we want here. We'll just say first commit and I probably misspelled that, but it doesn't matter. So there we go. Now it told us that it got these files and it added them into that GitHub folder. So what I can do here is actually just run git status again. I can check the status and it's going to tell us that there's nothing to commit. Everything was already committed. So what we want to do next here is I can actually go to that remote repository. And if you follow these steps, it's going to tell you what to do here. It's telling you to first initialize it. We can create that readme file. You don't actually need to do that, even though it's good to do that. It tells you to commit it. We just did that. And then it tells you to create a branch. So by default, the default branch is master. This is telling you to change that branch. You can do that if you want. You can name it cookies if you want. It doesn't matter. You can name it however you wish. But if you want to go ahead and skip this step, which we will, we will leave the default master branch. We want to go ahead and run this command next. So this is the URL to the repository. So we just created it. And what we're going to do is run git remote add origin. So we're setting the origin of that remote to that GitHub repo. So let's go ahead and open up that command prompt again. We'll just go ahead and paste that in. So git remote add origin and then we set that. So we just set that remote and now it knows to take these local files. And when we run that push command, it knows to push them to this project folder. So if I go ahead and refresh this, we see that there's nothing in this project. So let's go ahead and actually run that push. So now we can run git push dash u origin. And then we set the branch that we want to push it to. So we're going to push it to that master branch because that was a default branch. If you renamed it to main or whatever you wanted, you would just go ahead and select that name. So you would just set main here, but ours is master. So we're just going to go ahead and run push here. And what's going to happen here is you will be prompted if this is your first time, probably for your username and password, you can go ahead and enter those. And that basically just verifies that you can actually push something to that repository. And I have this default, um, I guess this prompt right here to sign in through the browser because I'm already signed in. So you might have this too. I'm not sure how that's going to work. So it's either going to prompt you for a username and password 
or just to sign in through your browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Because I'm logged into GitHub, it authenticated me and it should have pushed those files. So now it pushed the files and there we go. So if I go ahead and refresh this repository, now we see all the local project files. So if I go ahead and go to VS Code, we see my project manage.py and if I go to the browser or to GitHub, we can see all those project files. So now I can send this link to anybody, I can work with the team and everything is set up and that's how you push the files uh, to your remote repository. So two things I wanted to cover really quick here is how to clone a repo and what was the other one? Oh, that was how to ignore files. So for those of you working in Django or just for anybody needing to ignore some files, let's say you have a virtual environment here or let's say we wanna ignore manage.py because there's times we may not wanna push all the files to your remote repository. So we can just create a .git ignore. So a git ignore file, if I can spell that right. Once we create that, let's say we wanna ignore this file. So I can just say manage.py and that will now ignore this file. I don't know if I need that forward slash at the end or not. I believe I do because we are in that file path. So this way, next time I run those changes, if I go ahead and run git status again, it tells me that we added that file. So once we run those changes again, this file will not be pushed to that remote repository. So the main reason I use this is to hide maybe some passwords or just to ignore my virtual environment if I don't want that live. Now the next command for anybody looking to share a project, if you're trying to clone one of my projects, um, some people have issues with trying to find one of my projects. Let's say they wanna work on this Django Pro Shop where we build an e-commerce site, go ahead and grab this URL. We'll close this out. Let's completely open up a new command line or a command prompt here. Let's see, or a terminal. So we'll just go ahead and open that up. We'll CD into my desktop because that's where I want it. And then we can run git clone and then paste that URL. So it's as simple as that to clone a project. Once you run that, there you go, all the project files are now locally and that's how you clone it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I just wanted to go over those steps. Check out the article in the link description. If this didn't fully make sense, you need more information, uh, check out the other link for Bradshaw Versi's uh, video on this. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.